So what's one of the most stressful times in coding? You've written a lot of code, you're right up against a deadline and you try and run it for the first time and it blows up and you have no idea where or why or how and you're gonna have to spend even more time going through and debugging it. And that can be super stressful and I relate, but it hasn't happened to me in a very long time and that's because I use a workflow that avoids that situation at all cost and I'm going to teach you that workflow in this video. So to do that, I'm gonna start off in JavaScript. Now, I'm choosing JavaScript because it's the number one language in the world, but honestly, you can do this workflow in absolutely any environment. And so I've got my numbers.js file here. We're gonna write a small piece of code that is gonna deal with some numbers. But first off, we're gonna write a hello world just to make sure that everything's actually up and running. And then I'm gonna go run that. And we got hello world, right? Easy peasy. So now we're actually gonna go write our code. We know that Node works. We got a good working situation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is bring in a list of numbers. And now for eagle-eyed JavaScript viewers out there, I know this is an error. That's kind of the point here. Next thing we're gonna do is sum up those numbers. And to do that, I'm gonna use a reduce method on numbers, which is gonna take a accumulator starting value of zero and then add on all of the items in that array onto it. And eventually we'll end up with the number 10 as our sum. I'm then gonna print that out. Then I'm gonna go add on 42 onto that list of numbers. And then I'm going to copy and paste this sum line and that's gonna do that sum again. So obviously this code is really small and it's not all that complex. And that's just because I wanna keep this video short and show you more about the workflow. I've seen people get into serious problems with large amounts of code and that's kind of what I'm trying to help you avoid here. So I'm gonna save this out and then we're gonna try and run this code again and boom, it blows up. So there's actually three errors in just this six lines of code. And we don't know what those are at this point. We'd have to go through some debugging cycle to figure that out. But what I want to do is show you a workflow where you would have never gotten into this circumstance in the first place. And the secret is in the iterations. So, so far we've only done two iterations here of edit and then test. We have edited in console log hello world, which worked, and then we edited in all of our code, which didn't work. And in contrast, in my workflow, I would have edited and run in terms of cycles five or six or seven times by now. So you might ask, well, how do you decide when to test? And that's really a calculation of risk. So let's think about risk by putting up a risk meter. Now at the far left-hand side is essentially safe. Your code is running, it works as you expected, and you're in the green. And then extending from that is another small bar of green, which is when you've made trivial and small changes of the code that you expect will work. And then from there is the yellow bar, and that's when you've made a lot of lines of changes or a lot of complex changes, and you know that at this point you probably should test. And then extending from there is the red bar. And that's when you absolutely know at this point you need to test and you can't write any more code until you test. Now, where are those bars? What thresholds should you set? Well, that really depends on your familiarity with the language and how you're feeling about how good of an engineer you are today. Sometimes you can feel really good about your ability to write 10 lines of code without a bug. Other times you're really cautious. You might be only writing one or two lines of code and it's really just up to you and your subjective measures. But right now, of course, we are in the red because our code isn't working. So let's go back and go to that console log world state and get back to a fresh starting point. And of course, we're gonna run it again to make sure that we're good. And we are, great. So I'm gonna bring in our numbers. That puts us into the green. We have made a change, but I feel pretty confident about this. It's, I think it's okay. So we're gonna bring in this summing reduce function. Now there's some complexity here. We've got a function that we're calling, we're calling reduce. Yeah, this is pretty complex stuff-ish. So I'm gonna put us solidly into the yellow on this, but I wanna test it out. So I'm gonna go put us into the red by adding that console log. And that way we're gonna be able to see what the output is. So let's run this again and boom, okay. So let's contrast this with what we had before. Well, now we've got half the number of lines. So that makes it that much easier to debug through. And we do have an error message that we can look at. We've got uh, numbers reduce is not a function, which seems pretty coherent. So we're gonna take a look and see if we can figure out what, what the issue here is with numbers reduce. So I'm just gonna comment out these two lines and see if we run. And we do, so cool. Now we're back on home base. We think 
that this code runs or at least doesn't blow up, which is that threshold. So now I'm going to uncomment out this line and see if that's what the issue is. And yeah, so the issue is there. And now that I look at this, it's pretty clear that I defined this array the wrong way. So I'm going to change this to a bracket, which is the way that you define an array in JavaScript. And there you go. And it works. Awesome. So now we're back on home base. And for you JavaScript folks out there, it's always interesting to find out why that parentheses thing kind of worked, but that's a topic for another video. So now I'm going to bring back in the console log and cool. And we're now back at safe spot and we have the code at basically halfway there. We've got three out of six lines running and we feel pretty confident about where we are. And that's the great thing. Your stress level is that much more reduced. You've got code that's running. You can go and take a break. You can make tea, get lunch, and then come back and start from a fresh starting point as opposed to walking back into a situation where you have code that you either don't know works or you know doesn't. Work. But I am gonna change those thresholds though because Having made that mistake of the parentheses to the brackets, I'm not feeling particularly good about my JavaScript coding skills today. So I'm gonna make sure that from now on, I test more regularly. So my thresholds are set a lot lower and that's one of the benefits of this workflow is you can kind of gauge your testing cycle times based on how you're feeling about the quality of code that you're writing today. Okay, so the next thing to do is set those numbers and because I am feeling not so great about my JavaScript skills. I'm going right into the red, and that means I need to retest. So let's run it again, and wouldn't you know it, boom, it blows up. So let's take a look at the error message on this one, assignment to a constant variable. And what do I know? Well, I know these three lines are good. That's the safe spot. So it's this new line that's causing the trouble. And I know that the only thing that this references is numbers. I know that that's a constant value and I know that you can't reset a constant value and therefore, yes, the issue is I need to change this into let, which means that it's a variable now. So let's give it a try, see if it works. And yes, it does. And now we're back at safe again, but we have four lines done instead of just three. And so we're just that much closer to being done. And all we need to do really is just copy and paste this. And of course we know that that code works. So let's try it again. And boom, again, okay, so what's the issue here? Well, we're redefining sum. So what do we know? Well, we know that these four lines of code are good, and we know that these two lines have caused the trouble. So it's gotta be one of these two lines, and more than likely it's this sum line here, because yeah, we already have a sum. So we need to one, get rid of that const, we don't need to redefine it. And then of course we had the same issue that we did before, because we're redefining some, we need to turn that into a let. So let's give that a try and see how we go. And there you go. So there we go. We've got our six lines of code running and it may have just taken a little bit longer because of those iteration cycles. But when you think about it, your stress level is one reduced because you're not getting that heart stopping moment when your code doesn't work in the first place. And if it takes you an hour to write out the code completely, and then takes you one to two to three hours to then debug through that code and fix all the errors, if it took you an hour and a half to write it iteratively, that's so much more the savings. And as you're writing, you're seeing opportunities to maybe refactor and make the code better. For example, in this case, you might use push instead of this assignment. And we'll set that to const now. And that still works. Cool, we're doing some great refactoring in here. And we can take this sum and turn it into a function. And then we just call sum here. And then we remove sum because we no longer need that. So we're reducing the number of lines of code. And then let's run it. And it works just fine. How cool is that? So we've actually made the code that much more simple because we've always been working from a safe spot. All right, well, I hope you learned a little bit about how I code and maybe how you can code iteratively if you are in this pattern of writing out all your code and testing it in one big go. I know I personally have really enjoyed coding for my entire career, and I think it's because I code iteratively like this. I never have those heart-stopping moments of having tons of code that's untested. I'm always jumping from safe point to safe point to safe point. And so I can go and take a break. I can walk around and not have to worry about the code being in an unstable state all the time. All right, well, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.